Derbyshire during the bank holidays. Police receive hundreds of reports a day involving alcohol and drugs. Okay, okay, leave it with us. We'll get to, we'll get officers out there. My personal feelings on drink drivers, they are the lowest of the low, so it's my job to take them off the road. 90 minutes into what's expected to be a busy 12-hour night shift, the traffic cops are spread out across the force area. It's going to be busy. Traffic cop Jim Payne is 10 miles south of Derby, looking for drivers under the influence. I'll often position the vehicle out of view of them until they're passing me. It's not long before a silver Citroen Picasso catches his attention. Sometimes it's down to old-fashioned police and you look at a vehicle and you realise that something's not quite right with it. An A from Oscar Tango 14, um, just in relation to my permissions, I'm in a marked road policing vehicle. Intention at the minute is just to follow while everybody's driving normally. Yeah, I'm directly behind the vehicle, so he's obviously aware of my presence. As soon as I put the lights on, I had this feeling that this is going to be the point that this vehicle is going to go. As I'm in a marked road policing vehicle, suit management trained. The cars continued, but not really drove that much quicker. It uh, took a left, possibly to try and evade me. The Citroen turns off the main roads, forcing Jim to slow down. The cars continued just to get that bit ahead and managed to pull out of sight. As the suspect speeds away... Yeah, vehicles hit the AMPR camera. Control alerts traffic cop Matt Copestate to the location of the suspect's car. The traffic is moderate. Road service is dry. Unfortunately for the subject, I'd been round that area for the last hour. Now directly behind the vehicle. Speed is 4-0. Now overtaking on the wrong side of the road, DRA medium back to low. Three occupants, one male driver, female front seat passenger. Right, right, right now. The adrenaline's going, you're constantly looking around for and risk assessing. Brett Billane. As the suspect fails to stop, Matt follows him into a residential area. It's a big concern about what lies ahead. You're thinking about pedestrians on the road, kids out playing on the street other road users. It's now wrong side of the roundabout, DRA high. At that moment, obviously what's going through your mind is this guy's prepared to do anything to get away. 50 miles an hour. It's Brett Billane. Back towards Repton. Speed is 7-0. Enters the Nationals. Continues 7-0. Leaving the built-up area, the driver takes to country lanes. Road users, DRA low. Now that presents a risk in itself because you can't see what's coming round the bend and the width of the roads are constantly changing from narrow single track into areas where you can fit two cars. It's heavy on the brakes, speed 6-0. So right, 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 back towards Hartshorn. He's now overtaking wrong side of the road. He's collided, collided. He's a box van. He still continues, though. That's some of the worst driving I've ever seen. He had no business even attempting that overtake. It was clear he was going to run out of road, and I think he was very, very lucky not to injure himself or someone else. He still continues. It was a side swipe to the near side. He's got extensive near side damage. Anyone would think that that would be enough to stop any driver from continuing, but he put his foot down and tried to get away with half of his car missing. It's a single track road. Extensive near side damage. After 20 minutes, the pursuit has come full circle, with the driver back where he was first seen. Approaching junction standby. He's right, right, right. In my experience, people who are trying to get away from the police always head to areas they know. Still on unnamed road. Expecting he's going to come out on the main Hartshorn Tickle Road. 
it's better for them if they know the roads and what twists and turns it's got in store for us. Back Repton Road, Repton Road. I believe we're back towards Bretby. Continues Repton Road. Speed is 5-0 in the National. Yeah, the driving's erratic around these corners. I'm just giving him some room. Speed 6-0 in the Nationals. Heavy braking, round offside bend. Yeah, he's losing control a bit now, just backing off, giving him room. Entering Brett B again now. Continuing to drive around in circles, the suspect goes off-road again, up the same track as earlier. He's now off in the field. Coming up. Driving now like this. The Picasso driver tries to make a run for it across a field. Driver's already gone to custody. Come here, mate, I'm not finished with your pub. A tip-off ends yeah, yeah. in a car park foot chase. <laughs> What's that all about then, pal? <laughs> and a drink driver putting lives at risk. Right, right. Can't stand up. It's absolutely amazing. He's now overtaking wrong side of the road. After a 25-minute chase along country lanes during a busy bank holiday weekend... It was a side swipe to the near side. He's got extensive near side damage. A fail to stop Picasso driver tried to escape traffic cop Matt Copesnake. He's now off in the field. Before losing control and crashing. The driver then opened the door and ran out into this field where we detained him. The driver's already gone to custody. He blew 55. The suspect is denying he was driving the car. You're driving it like this. While the traffic cops recover the Picasso. Hold on, I'll put this quarter panel on. PC Paul Barker will interview the passengers to find out who was driving. Where are the passengers now? There you go. No, passengers are over here. Right, OK. Come over here, mate. What time did he pick you up? Take what time did he pick you up? Uh, Five. Yeah. And he was all right. He was, he was, he was, he was speaking about like everything was normal. And then you guys, one of the cars come behind us, and he started panicking. And then he just says, "Don't worry." And then the next minute, wham. so I started to panic, and we said, "What's wrong?" And he said, "Don't worry." And then he started to drive fast. I've never experienced this. I'm lucky to be alive, to be fair, to be honest. Right, if you can just squiggle in that in that little great box there, that's it. OK, you can go. go we'll Jade, yeah? yeah? Not that far away, anyway. Uh, All right. The passenger is free to go, but the suspect will remain in custody to be questioned. In my opinion, he's, he's taken off because he believed he was over the limit uh, for drinking and driving, and also he was a disqualified driver, um, so he obviously had a lot to hide. The fact that he's driven at those speeds and failing to stop for the police all during a pursuit whilst drunk is just beggar's belief. It's a busy bank holiday and calls are piling up in force control. Yeah, you're through to the police. What's happening? A tip-off from the public has come in about a suspected drink driver. OK, leave it with us. We've got officers travelling to you. OK. Yeah, one six. Uh, I'm going to be coming along from Whittle. Yeah, it's a uh, Mercedes. Traffic cop Matt Copestake is responding. What's the reg? Right, there's potential drink driver in store in Derby, which is just the other side of where we are. Just about to leave store in a white Mercedes. Uh, apparently can't walk straight. So we're going to try and intercept him before he uh, does some damage. Tip-offs from the public are quite common. It can be quite rare to get in the situation where there's one about to leave. It's crucial that we get there before he leaves so we can detain him. Still on the phone, the mail's still in the store, apparently. He's going to come out of there, but there is another entrance if he decides to go the other way. 
from one six. I've got eyeball on the uh, exit if he comes this way, and then if all the units uh, can plot up Queensway, we've got it all covered now. Entrance covered, mate. You're going to be on the trees. We come out from there. Nice one. Um, there's a local and me covering this exit, so uh, he's got to come past one of us. Lovely. I don't know why people do drink driving. It's uh, it's a despicable thing to do. You're not in your right mind if you get behind the wheel of a car when you're drunk. Unfortunately, on the roads policing unit, we see the extreme consequences of uh, what happens when people get the, behind the wheel when they've had a drink. And uh, it devastates lives, unfortunately. Do you want to throw that right, T? On the other side of the car park, traffic cop Andy Wright has stopped the suspect driver. Coming in now, mate. He's in car park. He's tried to exit out there and then he's reversed back into the car park. 1686 now. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you Driving. doing in that? Driving. Don't move over till I tell you it's not going anywhere. Is it your car? Thank you. Brother's car. All right. Yeah. Just sit tight till we're finished with him. All right. Yeah, anything else to talk? Mm. I'll get a wipe, mate. He's uh, passed his breath test, uh, so we're just going to do a drug wipe on him. He just—he does seem quite intoxicated. Hopefully, not keep you much longer, mate. Hopefully, not keep you much longer. All right. Come here, mate. I'm not finished with you, pal. Get here. On the floor. Get down now. I ain't got nothing. Put your face down. Face down now. What have we done? What have we done? Come on, boys. Live. Go wild. Put your arm around your back. Put your other arm around your back. Just relax. Put your other arm around your back. Roll over. Get your other arm out. Around your back. Other arm now. Around your back. Come on. What have we done? Just relax your arm. Come on, pal. That's it. <laughs> right. Sit you up, mate. What was that all about then, pal? He's off his steps. No, he ain't, mate. Yeah, yeah. mate. You, Stay mate. sat down. Just relax yourself. Stay with you. I'm not. Right, mate, I'm going to perform a drug wipe on you, all right? Yeah. Failure to do so is an offence for which you'll be arrested, all right? Open your mouth for me. Open your mouth wider, do your cheek, and your other cheek. Right, we'll lift you up. Stand up, can you put your legs underneath yourself, push yourself up, please. Ready? One, two, three, stand up. Stand up. Right, I'm going to get you in my car. Get you in my car, please. Yeah, absolutely. Just sit in there, mate. Yeah. Sit in. Oh. Whose car is it, then, that? My brother. Your brother's? Are you insured on it? Yeah. What are you running for then? What else you had? Nothing. Well, it'll show up on here, won't yeah, it? you see. Yeah, it's blown zero, mate. Blown zero? Yeah. Right. Okay, lovely. What do you mean? Why am I demeaning us? So what was you waiting for then? You seem under the influence of something, okay? So you've, you you've, you've passed your breath test. 
So I, I suspect this, this, because, you're, you. because you're slurring your words. Well, to who? To me now. No, so why was right you waiting in the first place? Right now. Why okay. was you waiting in the first place? Incident reported. On what? The, there may be an intoxicated male driving your car. So that's why we've stopped you. So you've passed your, passed your breath test, but I'm of the opinion you're under the influence of something. So I performed a drug wipe on you. So it's very much like a pregnancy test, so it's taken a saliva sample of him and it tests for cannabis or cocaine. If another line comes up in either of the uh, windows, uh, we have a positive test for either of those substances. Faint line, mate, but it's there. I'm happy. Yeah. He provided a positive drug wipe. It's tested positive for cocaine. All right, so at this time you're under arrest on suspicion of driving. Oh, driving whilst over the prescribed limit of a controlled drug, namely cocaine. You're going to be taken to cells where you'll be asked to provide a blood sample, all right? Can you take him in and I'll follow you down? All right. And then we'll get you in this car. Follow you straight down. Cheers, mate. It's the faintest of lines, but it's there, and it's just give us that indication that he's, uh, he's had something, so... Right, I'll take your cuffs off, mate. Keep your hands where I can see them. I've been stopped driving a white Mercedes, uh, exiting car park by my colleague, um, exited from the driver's seat. He's provided a positive drug wipe, indicating cocaine in his system. He's been arrested to allow prompt and effective investigation and secure and preserve evidence. Matt needs the man to take a blood test to prove if he's over the limit for drugs. Well, I'm just going to have to go through these forms with you and then we'll crack, crack on, all right, yeah? He wants to establish if the suspect has any other substances in his system that may affect the blood test. Are you currently taking or using any drugs or medication prescribed or supplied to you for medicinal or dental purposes? Even with prescription medication, it is very much like the drink-drive limit, as there is a limit to how much you can have in your bloodstream to be still be legal to drive. It weren't even a positive test. Right, you weren't even a line there. Where, you show me it? There was, mate. Can I see it, please? You can in a bit, yeah. I liked it a lot. Faintest of lines in I the cocaine. Well, yeah. You can have a look. It's fine. There's a faint line, not a negative. The fact that there's a line there, don't the matter how faint it is. Controlled line. Controlled yeah, line were there. And then there's another line. Yeah. If it's faint, it's negative. It's not. If it's yeah, ne Listen, if it's negative, there's no line at all. No. There's no significance to the fact that it was a faint line. It's an indication whether it's a strong line or a faint line. Are you ready? ready? It could be just yeah. that the chemicals haven't reacted as strongly in the drug wipe itself. Right, listen, it indicates that you may have cocaine in your system. It's not 100% accurate, so the blood sample will determine whether you have. So if you think I've come here for no reason with you, you're very much mistaken, all right? so. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for your time. See you later. Thanks for sticking up there. You're about six inches up behind. Oh, just stand here a minute, mate. I'm just going to build the offence, Joe, and then he's ready to go. Yeah, we've obtained a blood sample now, so that's going to be sent away for forensic analysis um, to see if he's got any substances in his system. Thank you very much. I'll just show you out then. Yes, the this way. There's a road policing officer drink and drugs are the bread and butter of what we do. It impairs people's driving at the end of the day and they shouldn't be on the road. Coming up, bank holiday drink drivers cause danger on the roads. What is the alleged event? And refuse to face the truth. Fail to provide. Fail to provide a fluid to the truth. He's all over the road. Oh, the wretch, please. What's the wretch, please? I, I don't want to get that close, to be honest. It's a busy bank holiday, and a 999 call has come in from a member of the public about a suspected drink driver. And he's been driving on the hard shoulder, yeah? Well, he's, he's, kind of, he's in the inside lane, but he keeps swerving all over everywhere. 30 miles from the centre of Derby, 
Traffic cop Andy Wright is looking for the car. Good car. BW Golf. Great. There used to be a witching hour when the pubs finished at 11. Nightclubs would be kicking out at 2. Now it's drinking as and when, then, yeah, you can get your witching hours out all over the time. The driver looks like he may have had an accident. Along with other units, Andy parks up by the dual carriageway. Right, I'm off the roundabout on that first um, T junction. What I'll do is if he, if he comes, I'll shout him out on 90. And then uh, if it fails to stop, I'll switch straight to channel two. Yeah, one eight monitor. Any time now, any time now. Moments later, Andy spots the suspect driver. Yeah, I'll be on this vehicle now. Yeah, he's all over the place. Reasonable lane to lane. It's serial lights on. One there. <laughs> We've been all still waiting all over the carriageway. I have a feeling it will fail to stop. Just go past the um, lay-by prior to junction still on the near side. Speed increase now to 50. Not putting any pressure on the vehicle, my legs have got everybody else with this. Just behind Andy, another unit is in position to help surround the car and box it to a stop. At force control, a senior officer assesses the risk of the pursuit. Hang on, eight and ACO one. I'm aware of this now. Um, happy with what the plan is. Um, continue to summarise and everything further. Just in addition, if it does fail to stop, you are an issue of pursuit and tactics. Uh, to keep you up to date if it's not happened. Yeah, two four think he's uh, probably joking a little bit with speed increase and then drop in from a week in from lane one to two. They'll know that he now has got a marked police vehicle behind it. I'm thinking, is he goading me? What is he trying to do? Further up the road, traffic cop Paul Barker is ready to join the pursuit. The driver possibly going to be coming off back that way, but you never know, he might come off here, he might carry on. If he's that pissed. There he is. Paul drops in behind to hold the traffic back. Tango 31 uh, in the stick. Bump mark to high performance vehicle, pursuit management train. Speed now increased. So, 6 0. He's in the centre lane. Yeah. 3. Right, let's get it on then and get it in the suit. Right, your safety's on. While Paul keeps his colleagues safe, Andy steers the suspect off the motorway. Yeah, I've got him to pull it out. He's an absolute shit face. Yeah, the vehicle's uh, heading towards the services now. Looks like he's talking about it. One person in it. I'm trying to get him beyond, uh, beyond this curb here so I can't slip him back out. Yeah. He's absolutely hammered. He just looked at me with, with like a dazed look, not believing what was happening. There was a vodka bottle on the floor, there was cans all over it. He absolutely stank of it. Under arrest section four, the road traffic act. Okay, you don't have to say anything. Yeah. May I'm the offence, won't mention a question. Something which relates to the line of call. Anything you do say, may be given an evidence. Okay, the rest is necessary to have prompt investigation. Alright. Swing the legs round. It's fresh damage to the car, I can't open the door. Yeah. Have you got a driving licence? Yeah. Yeah. Jump up, mate. Jump in, mate. Relax. Have you got, got anything on you that you shouldn't have? Have you got anything in your pockets that you shouldn't have? No. Drugs, weapons, knives, anything like that? Yeah, I've got his phone on me. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He can't stand up. He's absolutely hammered. Yeah, yeah. alright. Okay. 
As the driver is taken to the police station, traffic cop Paul Barker continues the search for more bank holiday drink drivers. It was that drunk that uh, he's not been breathalyzed, he's been arrested for being up while driving whilst unfit. I think he's, he's, I don't think he's failed to stop, I just think he's that drunk that he, uh, he doesn't realize what's happening. Early hours of the night shift tend to be looking for drink drivers going home from parties. Uh, they tend to think that if they leave it a bit longer, they might sober up or we won't be looking for them. It's not long before Paul spots a car in the middle of the road. NA Oscar Tango Street, one for 10 15 vehicle, please. Put the blue lights on and it just carried on up the road and pulled to the offside. Hello. Hello, John. How much have you had to drink? Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah. Hey, step out for us. Come and take a seat in my car for me, please. Come on, Ducky. Have you got your car keys? No, I've not. I've just no, you've not. I've just seen you drive the bloody car. Yeah. Right. You've had too much to drink, haven't you? Hey. So, you're under arrest. On, suspi on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle whilst unfit through drink or drugs. OK, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You won't mention when questioned something which you later on in any court, anything you say, maybe you're in evidence. OK, necessity for a very prompt and effective investigation, and so you don't uh, disappear. OK, come and take a seat in the back of my car. What am I OK, all right. In a uh, Tango Street one, no. one detained at uh, my location. No. Excess alcohol. What are you doing here? We're going to go down to the Ripley Police Station. Why? Please don't do that to me. I just want to go down to my daughter. When we go down please to the police do. station, listen, listen to me. When we get down to the police station, you take another test, okay? And down, and depending on what that test says, okay, I depends on what's going to happen. Okay. So. That's fair enough, but I'm, I'm just tired. I'm just going to go. Oh, it's all right. Are you allowed to drive that vehicle? Yes, yeah, of course I am. Right, OK. Right, I've explained to you. Wait, take it. To the police station, you know. With... Why? Can I explain to you? Because you're under arrest for driving a motor, for driving a motor vehicle whilst on foot. Can drive it? OK, well, that's... Can you can... drive that motor vehicle? OK, well, I followed you. I went to the motor vehicle to get some shoes. Well... I know you're lying, so... 33 years of doing this, nothing surprises me with people. They'll look you in the face and they'll, say, they'll lie to you. I don't understand why I'm lying for. I've explained it to you. I don't know how, how many times I need to explain it to you. Well, I haven't drove that vehicle. OK. While Paul prepares to check the female in for a breath test, 10 miles away at the police station in Derby, Hello. How are you? Traffic cop Andy Wright is dealing with the man he arrested for drink driving earlier. First of all, what's your name? You're hard. I know. I know. <laughs> Switch it to the something. Okay. I'm just having a breath laser. That's right, yeah. The system is all. That's what we're doing, mate. We're having a breath laser. Okay, put your shoes back on. <laughs> You can read a book called The Code of Practice, which tells you about our policies and procedures and how we have to look after you. That's you guys have to. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. If you fail to provide, you will definitely commit an offence. By providing, you at least got a chance. Stand up for me then, please. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's it, first one, done. Take a seat a minute. So this is your second one. It's got to do the exact same thing you can. Big deep breath. Keep going, keep going. That's it. You've blown 112 and 116. The legal limit being 35, so that is a fail. To be on the road in that state, it could have killed anybody. Um, it could have hit anything and not, it probably won't have even known. It shouldn't be on the road. It, it should be banned 
for life, really. Further authorising the detention at the police station until you yeah, at a level that we're satisfied no, you're fit to be able no, to charge. No, no, no. I, I need to go home and sleep. You can't. Or... You're gonna have to sleep here. No, need... Listen, listen. I am so no, you know you've blown and hundred and something. That's very drunk. And everything else says you're very drunk, so you've got to stay here until you're sober enough to be dealt with. All right. For the suspect. See you in a minute. It's a night in the cells to sober up. For traffic cop Paul Barker, he's now booking in the third drink driver of the shift. She's claiming she wasn't driving. Just come on, out you come. It's a bit much, guys, to say that I just went to my stick up my car for a second. Yeah, all right, yeah. Please come and do me. There you go. I don't like liars. Come on. They said he was followed uh, along the main road, eliminated the blue lights, eventually stopped. I got out of the vehicle and found a sat in the driver's seat, asked to exit the vehicle. Yeah, but, yeah, but one there was that the engine was off. I formed the opinion that she was drunk, she was arrested uh, for driving whilst unfit. So you were drink. What's going to happen for me? Uh, necessity yeah. being prompt, prompt an effective investigation to stop her disappearing. Right, fair enough. You've handcuffed me, you've brought me yes, and now can I go and go to bed? I'm moving forward. What is, what is the offence here? Can I go and go to bed? It'll be offered the opportunity to provide two special That's group. fine, but I've not driven my car. Course, so it's will be explained to you, OK? I've not driven my car, so it's fine. No, it's still right, please. No, what's your date of birth, please? For what reason? What's your date of birth, please? What reason am I not allowed to smoke? You're not allowed to smoke in here. What's your, so what's your date? No, not I'm yet. No. It is difficult dealing with people that are under the influence of drink or drugs. They're repeating stuff and you're having to repeat things while you've arrested them, things like that. It just gets to a stage where you don't really want to talk to them anymore. Have you taken any drug or medication since you last arrived? I've had no drugs or medication. No. Eaten anything? I don't understand what you're asking me. What is the alleged offence? What's the alleged offence? If the driver doesn't give a breath test now, she could it? be automatically banned. Just sit, sit your bum down. Just relax. I've been doing this job 16 years. You don't have a drink of walks, so it'll affect that reading. Well, it won't do you any favours. I'm not, I'm not playing a game with you, and I'm not bartering with you. In the Tox Liza room, she's argued and argued and argued, just like she was at the front desk. And eventually, she tried to blow, but didn't have enough time. Uh, therefore, it's timed out and we are not to argue with her anymore. So she'll get uh, charged with failing to provide. So what's happening now? Then? Go in front of the sergeant and explain that you've, you've, uh, you've not given two samples of breath. Go down there. Failed to provide. I think failed to provide them. Oh, Despite the woman's protests, because she's too drunk to drive, she won't be going home. The cell that you're going into, unfortunately, we're full to Why am I going into a cell? Uh, so there's no toilet in your cell. There's a buzzer. If you move the toilet in, press the buzzer. Okay. Go in the room now. I don't feel my time's been wasted dealing with these people because I know I'll get a conviction at the end of the day and get them off the road because of she's a menace to society by the way that she drives. Coming up... Yeah, I've just been hit by your drunk driver. It's a race against time to catch another suspected bank holiday drink driver. When? Well, have you, you've been involved in a collision. Who's fled from a collision. You're telling me a few white lies and you have actually been out in your car. I have not done you no white lies. Hello, this is Derbyshire Police. Police emergency. What's happening there? It's nearly the end of a bank holiday, but there are more calls coming in about drink drivers. Right, OK, whereabouts... Right, listen to me, whereabouts are you? Police emergency. Yeah, I've just been hit by your drunk driver. Um, How do you know they were drunk? Because I can smell his breath. Yeah. And wh when I said that, actually, we can smell alcohol, he said, I've had a drink. Are you still there now? Got in his car and drove off. Got the so. An officer's been allocated. I've put that on the incident. We'll also have his details as well. So with RTCs like this, you don't really know what you're going to. Traffic cop Carl Jackson responds to the call. 
my immediate concern is I need to try and locate him. The obvious place to go is their home address. Yeah, I've got PNC details of the keep of that vehicle. I'm afraid to pass them. We're only a short distance from that. I need an officer to go to the scene of the collision so I could deal with respect to the drink driver. Yeah, where exactly is this collision? Traffic cop Adam Shipley is on hand to assist. As soon as somebody leaves the scene of a collision without giving any details, we start assuming that they've done something wrong. We need to get to the bottom of that and find out why they've left. Is your car drivable? Or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's actually the damage to it? Is it just pretty much... So he won't have much damage to his car then? No, Has he gone into the back of you? He's gone into the back. Yeah. If you look at the front of his, his bumper on the front of his car, you can see there's a black section, that's all. Right. Um, all right. I'll take a picture of the damage and everything. Whilst Adam gathers more evidence from the scene, Carl is with the suspect driver at his house. Yes, um, you've been involved in a collision, but you've left the scene. I need to do a few checks with you. When? When? Well, you've been involved in a collision, your vehicle. I've been at home all day. OK, well, that's not what I've been told. So you've got a can in your hand now, so just come with me. I find it very frustrating that people can't sort of hold their hands up and admit to the fact that they've done it. Um, and the reason for that is they've got a lot to lose, haven't they? A driving licence will, will be gone. Well, let's, let's walk just do it. Yeah. But people know that before they sit behind the wheel of a car when they're drunk, but they still risk it. And I was a tank of 27. I just got to wait to, a few minutes to do the test as uh, he was sipping a can of when I got to him. Probably had a mouthful out of it, which is all I've had time to do prior to coming back. He's an iron bin out in his car. Comes the address, uh, bloke's there. I think he's going to, fair to say that he's going to be over the limit from what my colleague said. Uh, not breathalyse him yet, but he's denying driving. It's a bank holiday, mate. I'm going to be drunk. Well, I'm not drunk. I don't work. OK. Do you put my race down, right? Well, it's the, the same car. Now, either it's one hell of an unlucky day and a bit of a strange coincidence and you're completely innocent, or you're telling me a few white lies and you have actually been out in your car. I am not telling you no white lies. Your engine's warm. Take a deep breath for me, please. It's frustrating that people lie because it's as if they think we're, or I'm stupid. I'm not just going to randomly turn up at someone's door and accuse them of drink driving with no evidence. It's, it's not, it doesn't work like that, does it? So you've blown 91, yep. which is very high, yep. uh, and so you have failed the breath test. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you are now under arrest. Um, can you actually describe him at all to me? Or He's probably about my height, <laughs> thin build. And cool. jeans on. I can't remember what the top of you Cool. What sort of age? 50s? 50s. He's yeah. 50s. Yeah, Oscar Tango, 27 from 3-0. Yeah, go ahead. Are you free to speak, mate? Yes, yes. He's under the rest. Nice yeah, nice work. Um, just a brief update from scene. Drivers describes, if you're ready, I'm sure he's going to match the description just to confirm. Yeah, go on. Yeah, male, uh, probably in his 50s, about 5 foot 8 ish, slim build and blue jeans. Yeah, that, that describes me perfectly. Put some bracelets on, yeah? This is shocking. It's not shocking. I have done nothing wrong. He's denying driving at all, so now we have to prove that he was. He's already admitted to me that it's his car and he's the only person insured uh, to drive it. And he's the only person with keys to it, so if we can see it out driving, then um, that's strong evidence against him. People go out drinking when the weather's nice and Unfortunately, that means because there's more people out doing that, there's more people then that get tempted to, to drive home. Drinking drug drivers on a nice bank holiday weekend. No regard for anybody else or themselves. On this spring bank holiday weekend, Derbyshire police dealt with hundreds of incidents linked to drugs or alcohol. One thing I never understand is how people don't see the effects of what drink driving is. If you drink and drive and the worst thing happens, 
um, as in you, you kill somebody because you're drunk behind the wheel of a car, then you will go to prison. You will lose your licence. And it's not just the family of the deceased that are affected. It's your family. You're, you're a drink driver, you're convicted, you get sent to prison, your name's all in the paper and, and whatnot. So that, that affects everybody you know and you're the one that's caused it. You're the drink driver, and that'll affect you for the rest of your life. In this episode... He's now overtaking wrong side of the road. He's collided, collided. The disqualified driver who drove his car into a field to get away from officers. That's some of the worst driving I've ever seen. Pleaded guilty to drink driving, dangerous driving, and driving without insurance. He's gone through that fence yeah. there. He was sentenced to 12 months in prison. Come here, mate, I'm not finished with your pub. The man who tried to run away from the cops. Hey, ain't done nothing. Put your face down. To avoid taking a drug wipe. He's tested positive for cocaine. Has been released under investigation whilst police await the results of his blood test. He's also been reported for driving without a licence or insurance. If found guilty, he could be facing a lengthy driving ban. Yeah, I've got him to follow him. He's supporting. He's an absolute shit face. The weaving driver who traffic cop Andy arrested. You've blown 112 and 116, the legal limit being 35. Was found guilty of drink driving and has been disqualified for 22 months and issued with a curfew, a tag and a community order. It's a bank holiday, I'm going to be drunk. The man who admitted being drunk but claimed he hadn't been driving his car. I have done nothing wrong. Was identified via an identity parade by a witness and is due to appear at court on suspicion of drink driving and failing to stop at an accident. OK, well, I followed you. And the suspect who claimed she wasn't driving after a night out I've not driven my car since I know you're lying, so... ..pleaded guilty to failing to provide and was disqualified from driving for 17 months. Tank 3-0, make your way with Stinger. In Derbyshire, an urgent call has just come in about a suspect car. Traffic cops Dave McAllister and Adam Shipley are hunting for it. There's been some couple of motorbikes stolen in the area. Somebody cited a black BMW involved. There are around two million thefts in England and Wales every year, with most happening at night. I'm trying to preempt where it's going to go. After ten minutes of searching, Dave spots a suspicious vehicle. I can see there's a black BMW 1 series, blacked out windows. It's parked up, tucked away, you wouldn't look at it twice. The copper's nose itching like mad. Um, I'm fairly confident that this is a wrong one. Um, it just seems out of place. As Dave approaches the car... He's gone. No lights on the vehicle, uh, and A, I'm an advanced high-performance vehicle, uh, t pipe shoot trains, unmarked vehicle, entering at 4050. Still no lights on the vehicle. Nothing on Black BMW, it's made off at, at speed, no lights on. Adam and other officers race to give back up, but for now, Dave is on his own. He then turns onto a road where I know where we've got a stinger site set up. I take it that was a negative sting, negative sting. Yes, yes. Speed eight. Nine miles an hour in a three-zero. His speeds are excessive for the roads that we're travelling on, but luckily there's very, very little traffic at that time in the morning. It's the wrong side of the road. Throwing things out of the vehicle uh, to try and stop me, look like a can or something like that. One of the things that they're trying to do is intimidate you into stopping, and I'm not in the business of being intimidated. Down here, now we're going to be going through. Uh, he smashed down a bollard and onto a footpath. As he smashed it down, I can't follow. You know, it's daylight, residential area, footpaths. 
dog walkers, luckily, on this occasion there wasn't, but it is just luck. Um, and they don't care, they just want to get away. Through the footpath, really he's going to have severe damage to the vehicle. In fact, he's lost a wheel. Uh, front wheel is hanging off this car, he's not going to last much longer. I can tell from that, that, the fact that vehicle's damaged, it's going to come to a stop and they're going to get out and try and run. He's up and over the bridge, doors are open. It's a decamp, decamp, four, at least four runners. As the runners escape across some fields, Adam and other officers arrive. And moments later, a suspect is spotted. Yeah? Police, somebody just ran through your garden from a car. Went that way? Up the roof? Yeah, a member of public just uh, in Tango 3 0. He's gone over some fences, over a flat roof. With the suspects on the run, a dog unit is called in. Hey, mate, you're right. Mate, that. He went over his back there, he's gone over basically about eight foot metal fence with spikes on top. Right. Um, somewhere into this housing estate. We've got cops in here, right. uh, but he's probably gone to ground somewhere, but you're not going to get the dog over where he's gone over. Um, I reckon he's in here somewhere. Black tracksuit, I think he had like white stripes down, sleeves and down. He's in here somewhere. Hopefully someone will see him in the garden. We can get him cornered. A few roads away. It's gonna be off, lad. Officers spot a man matching the description and detain him. One with white stripes down his jumper. Yeah, that's the one. We're about to see you. What's your name, Chief? Yeah, come in. Well, well, we'll get you up fingerprints anyway, lad. You're just wasting your time. There's no sign of the other runaways, and the search is called off. Hey, mate, you're right. With the suspected driver under arrest. Adam heads to the abandoned BMW. They've got some distance, haven't they? Oh, wow. I notice the fifth lad that was in the car, his brave mates have heroically left him behind because he's on crutches uh, and he's got a broken foot. Is he literally on crutches, then? Yeah. <laughs> they just binned him off. <laughs> there's, no honor, there's no honour amongst thieves, mate, is there? They'll come down, they'll come down from the top. Um, Come down onto this, this basically cul de sac dead end. Obviously, knowing this is down here, gone straight down here, smash the concrete post down, which takes them there, which is knackered their wheel, and carry them down this public footpath. Um, I know it's early, but you know, there could have been somebody out walking the dog or anything. It's just ridiculous. Knocked the fencing over and gone back onto the estate. Mental. Idiot kids. Yeah, out on the thieve. And they're all just kids. Yeah. Checks by officers later in the day, and they've gone back to the location where I found that car, uh, have located the two stolen motorbikes as well. We've now got those bikes back to their rightful owner. Uh, we've got two locked up, we've got a load of forensic hits, we've got that vehicle recovered. Nobody's injured. Cracking result. Coming up. Abandoned decamp, decamp. Truck thieves desperate to hide from the law. If they are still in there, there's a good chance they're going to get caught. And a suspected thief isn't coming quietly. Puff on, lady. There's a puff on, mate. There's a puff on already. You know it's police when there's blue flashing lights in your rear view mirror, don't you? It's full of it, youth. Police emergency. Yeah, whereabouts are you? Thank you very much for the officer's service for immediate response. Thank you. A nighttime crime spree is sweeping the UK, with trucks and vans being targeted by organised gangs. A witness has rang in to say that there's uh, white males slashing curtain siders uh, in services, which we term as an op barrack, where basically they break into lorries and steal whatever they're distributing. 
Around £8 million worth of goods are stolen every month. Traffic cop Jason Potts is responding to reports of lorries currently being targeted. It's a very quick offence that they do. They are nearly always spotted by somebody in the services and clearly they, they just don't care. They're there for one reason, that is to commit the crime, get the goods into their vehicle and leave. As far as we're concerned, they're still um, at the scene committing the crime, so we've got a good chance that we'll catch them. Okay, the suspects are seen getting into a car, which was also spotted at the scene of lorry thefts last night. Up ahead, Jason's colleague, traffic cop Chris Wells Jackson, is first on the scene. Dave obviously panicked and he drives up the curb at the side of me to get away. Four rope, four white male. It's gone through, through the service at that speed. It's abandoned, he camp, he camp. Male's running into the woods onto the footpath. Four men are run towards what they think is a patch of very long grass, but I know that that's not long grass and that it's a pond that filters the sewage from the service area and there's absolutely no chance in hell that I was jumping in there after them. They'll all be absolutely wet through. They're still going through the water now. Four males have run off. They've asked for the helicopter so we can assist in the search, but yeah, there's nowhere to prove to go. Where's Chris? Where does he want us? This is a body of water here, mate. Right. The reeds. Yes. It's gone this way. So right, Chris okay. Chris is on the other side. I don't know what way around it is, mate, so maybe... Yeah, Chris, um, Chris went that way, so maybe some containment over on the, the left-hand side of it. It's like a hidden big pond that's covered with trees, shrubbery, bushes, and it's unlit. And that's where these guys had run into. There should be four males. Yeah. They all should be wet through because they've all run straight in here. I think they're bloody running, drowning think, if they're not well, careful. I think they've run in here thinking it's just long grass. <laughs> and it's not. So dense, can't see anything. I'll have to wait till the dog and whatnot get here. If they're in there, they ain't going anywhere. So we've got everybody containing the, the area of this lake and uh, around to the back of here, which is, goes out onto the access road. We've got cops there. So if they are still in there, there's a good chance they're going to get caught. Just, it's literally now just playing a waiting game. Keep a containment on, make sure nobody escapes, and wait for the bird to turn up. With the helicopter failing to spot anything, officers send the dogs in. You there? Police officer with the dog. Police officer, send the dog. I've been hearing him before helicopter turned up, definitely in here. The noise just came from sort of here. The last chance. After 10 minutes, the helicopter crew spots something. Yeah, three one. Uh, so we've got a small break in the trees. We do believe that uh, we have located at least one person. If the uh, dog man can turn right or can go back in the direction they come from, I will tell him to stop. So 90 degrees to the right, and the uh, colour different. Uh, it's got a slight break in the trees. Went, uh, about 10 feet inside that break. Uh, that's where we've seen at least one. You're there, police officer, the dog, show yourself now, send this dog. Your last chance. Well, these are really resilient criminals that are so determined to not get caught that they're just going to sit in sewage for however long it takes. The dog handler makes his way into the pond, but the reeds are so dense 
they're struggling to find the suspect. And how far in front is the is this person from the dog now? Yeah, at bars. The best I can estimate is about 10 feet. I haven't got a view of you anymore. It's that dead. Get up now! You're gonna get sick. Get up now! Get up now! Get up and walk slow. Get up. Walk to me. Walk slow. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Get up now! Get out and walk slow. Keep coming, hands up. He absolutely stunk of sewage right up to his neck, so he'd clearly been swimming to that pond. How long were you planning sticking that out then? Because yeah. you look cold now. What? Yeah. Well, it's not so bad there. Let's go behind. Is it your car? Well, that's car. Oh, to the passenger seat, which is my wallet, one inside. So we, you're obviously Cheers, absolutely well. freezing to death, all right? We're going to be concerned about if anybody else is in there. Is there anybody else in there? Is there anybody else in there? I don't know. I still don't even know where they're going. I don't know. Well, I saw you all run into there and I heard you all go into there. I heard someone at the side of it, but I don't know who it was. Right. Because what I'm saying is, is that you may potentially going to end up putting a life at risk. So it's not a case of we want to get you locked up, it's a case we don't want anyone to die. Do you know what I mean? I saw at least two run here which explains the, the yeah. massive divot in yeah. there and there's no way they've got out the other side no. before I got there. No, they're in here, mate, 100%. I've got a duty of care for these, these other occupants of the vehicle. If they've all jumped in this pond, I'm now worried for their safety because it could be that they've drowned. When the dog comes in, we make calm, you'll come to no harm. After 30 minutes, there's still no sign of the other runaways, and the search is called off. Do you want this? Yeah, I'll put Ethan on for you. All right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's this now, see this. So we've done a, as good a search as we can in this uh, this pond because it's really, really thick with foliage and reeds. I'm convinced that there's still at least one other person in there. We'll see what the daylight uncovers. They can't stay in there forever. They're the ones sat cold, wet, shivering, smelly. And I'm gonna book them in and go home and go to bed. So it's uh, one nil police at the moment, I think. Grey or beige, Thank you. I'll uh, keep an eye out on South Bank Carriageway M1 as I'm traveling up. 11 miles south, a call has just come in about a suspicious car. Traffic cop Matt Copestake and the team are on the lookout for it. So there's been an attempt at catalytic converter theft at South Normanton, which is uh, just off junction 28 at the M1. Uh, vehicle's been seen. We've got all units making their way to the area to see if we can locate it, because if they've been unsuccessful with one, they're definitely going to be trying some more jobs. So we're going to have a look around the area and see if we can flush it out. Yeah, it's big business, the uh, catalytic converter thefts. Um, they're after the precious metals that are contained in the cats. With this type of theft doubling in the last two years, the police are determined to crack down on these criminals. Well, they're so brazen about it, they'll literally pull up on your driveway, hitch your car up and uh, angle grind it off. And it, it can be done in seconds, so catching them's really difficult. It's just hit up somewhere. Yeah, 16 also. So it's hit a camera. We don't think it's gone M1 northbound. So the two options, it's gone southbound again, M1, or the way that we're going to go. If it's looking for other offences, then this is an ideal candidate. Within minutes, fellow traffic cop Adrian Palethorpe is behind the McGann. Right, it's committed at 8.38, so we're going to join on the back. 
stay low. Moving up. 1-6, unmarked vehicle, advanced driver, TPAC pursuit, V600, summer coats. I'm pursuit commander. Uh, I'm getting everybody into position behind me. And once I'm happy that I've got everybody there, we then looked at doing a, a preemptive box on, on the vehicle. So we're traveling down the A38, uh, probably around about 60, 65 miles an hour. Box on, box on. Decides you don't want to stop, and he, he kind of dinks the back of my car. I feel the the, the, the blow from the vehicle. Lane one is indicated to the near side. Speed is 9-0. Lane one, still indicated. Stand by. I can only assume that it's the amount of sheer blue lights behind him that's made him think, I don't want to do this anymore. He's put his hands out of the car. He's signalling for us that he, he, he doesn't want this. He wants to stop. Stop, stop, stop. Get that way, get that way! Cuff on, lady, there's a cuff on, mate, there's a cuff on already. Look at, me, look at my rib, Go someone's hit me. Just relax. Look at my rib, please. Just relax, Pop. Someone's hit me with a baseball bat. Who has? To drive this car away. Just turn over. Not that car, I can't. Now. All right, on that side. Can you undo that one? Loosen out right, please. We'll sort you out in a sec. All right, just sit tight, stay quiet. I can't, I'm sit, sit tight and stay quiet. Let us do his job and then we'll sort you out, all right? The subject, I probably suspect he is the bottom of the food chain, to be fair. He's probably threatened uh, by these people and knows full well that th they can work in the safety that the, our subject, who we've caught, is not going to kind of drop them in it. Yeah. You're under arrest and suspicion of failing to stop, uh, criminal damage, criminal to a damage. police vehicle. Please, vehicle. No, I stopped. All right. Yeah. Right. Once I realised it, please, I stopped. I thought. Why did you not know it was police then when we put lights on and sirens and you broke out at box and ran my mate? I didn't. You know it's police when there's blue flashing lights in your rear view mirror, don't you? It's full of it, you. When you realise just how many of us there were. Well, why didn't you put your lights on at first and I'd have stopped for the police? Why? Why wait? You knew exactly we were behind you. You knew it. Yeah. So he's been taken back to Ripley. Uh, we've got uh, somebody driving the vehicle he was in back to Ripley as well, so we can do a more thorough search, and we'll take it from there. But um, I think he might just be a driver, and the actual offenders have got away. But we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to pick the bones out of it back at the neck. The uh, vehicle stopped on the A38, so he's been initially arrested for failing to stop the police uh, and also criminal damage to a police vehicle. He's going to be further arrested now by me on suspicion of theft from a motor vehicle. While the man is booked in, officers check the damage to the police car and a search of the McGann reveals some suspicious items. Um, here we've got the typical uh, ghost plates, what the, the swaps and chains, which is, uh, and then obviously we've got a jack for the car. An electric uh, cutter, and they simply just, just find the car, what they're after, they'll jack it up, get under it, they'll, they'll cut it with the electric cutter on either side, remove the cat, and this can be done in literally w within 30 seconds uh, with someone who knows what they're doing. The man will be interviewed about the theft offence in the morning. Catholic converters are not cheap items to replace. You're probably looking at anything from 700 to, to 2,000 pounds for a Catholic converter. So when you stop them from doing it, it, it's incredibly satisfying. Coming up. That's been involved in the theft of a quad bike. A spate of reported thefts lead officers to an arrest. Right, mate, that's wrong time and the rest of the burger, right? Passing me now, it's coming back towards you. And a van driver suspected of stealing fuel. The vehicle is not stopping at the minute, stand by. Are we, are we game on here? Has a lot to hide. Got the filters, tent frame, there's a the grow tent. All use production of uh, cannabis. Three, four, one, 
the 57 now towards Blossom, so that's a new white band I'll shout out. Near Chesterfield, traffic cop Matt Cooling receives a call about a ram raid on a shop. Crimes like this often occur at night, when stores are closed and there's less chance of witnesses. Um, there's mention of a white transit van that's been seen with no number plates. We'll start making his way uh, with Luke and John that making the, the way as well. Motorbikes and a quad bike have been stolen, and officers, including PCs John Terry and Luke Christian, are also looking for the suspect van. I'll just have a quick word with local cops that are here. Hey, oh, you all right? Where, where have they gone? Could have gone oh. that way, could have gone this way. I'm not uh, sure yet, so... What is it, two white vans? Yeah. Right. All right, on it down that way for now, then. All right. What is it they've stolen? Are it motorbikes? Motorbikes? Yeah, it's full of motorbikes in there, yeah. Right. Okie dokie then. I'll, I'll have a look down there then, just yeah. shout anything up on 20 then. Yeah. Cheers, mate. So, the local officers say that they're targeting a motorbike shop, so it looks like the, a number of motorbikes have been stolen. But at the moment, we're not, we're not sure which way um, the fenders have left the scene. But there's three of us up here now, so we'll start covering some of the potential routes. Minutes later, John Terry and other officers track down the suspect van. So we, we've come just to assist John, um, who I think has been contacted by some of the local officers. They've come across the van in this car park that, and I think the stolen quad bike has been found inside it. The van is parked on a site used by travellers. Your officer was going to find that and stolen. And Officer, officers have already found stolen stuff in the vicinity of your caravans. But some of the residents are not happy that the police are there. That's that's been involved in the theft of a quad bike that's been found round the corner from this mm. caravan. Yes. Yeah, so right. Are you ready? What? Are you ready to pay for what or not? Are you ready to check this out? I am. Yeah, I am doing. Yeah. And there are dents on the van with paint marks that appear to match the decor on the front of the shop that was raided. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. As Matt and John continue the search for the suspect thieves, there's an update. BMW X5 that's hit the camera it's one of the lads who probably done this burglary mate are going to be in that um, the lads have been carried off from the estate mate in, in the town centre out of the way of the burglar responsible I'd say there's two ways some of those the actual main routes as well with uh, had a, an NPR hit uh, on a vehicle that we think is also linked to the earlier burglary that we went to at Charlesworth. Uh, we think that's on its way back into Glossop now. So myself and a number of the other RPU units are trying to intercept it. John Terry is behind the suspect BMW. John just took the driver and uh, gave it It wasn't too far, five to one road. Hey, pal. This car was seen to leave a site where a van has been left that's been used in a burglary. Yeah. Okay. And then near to the van is a stolen quad bike that's been stolen tonight. Okay. Based on the fact that this car's then been very quickly seen to leave that location when police arrive, um, I'm going to detain you in the car temporarily while we search it um, under what we call Section 1 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. Yeah. And I'm looking for stolen items that I suspect might be linked to the burglary that we're investigating. Oh. Both the driver and the car are given a thorough search, and although they find no evidence, they decide to arrest the man. Right, mate, that's one time and arrest suspicion of burglar, all right? So, you know, if you may have a search, you know, actually, one question to the car. If you do say, you may be given evidence, you arrest as necessary. The local officers are, um, have arrested him because they suspect that he's involved in the burglary in the circumstances. They've, they've turned up at the location where the van and the stolen quad's located, and on doing so, then that car's you know, very quickly left the scene, so 
there's enough to suspect that he's involved, but obviously he'll be interviewed now and uh, we'll see what he's got to say for himself. Not all thieves working at night are organised criminals. Sometimes it's opportunists trying their luck. I was about to Isle of Wight, uh, tramping down orange. Easy to spot if you slow around. Just west of Ripley, traffic cop Nick Rice is out on patrol. Received a, a report that there's a bright orange transit van in a petrol station that is filling drums up with fuel and then makes no attempt to pay. It's just got in the, in the vehicle and, and driven off. How long ago was it? Five minutes ago, roughly 23.47 it came in. I'm uh, A38 North at the minute. I'll pull off at Cox Bench and sit on the entry slip southbound at Cox Bench if anything comes past. Motorway, uh, make north and I'm just turning around at the Divi. The time of night, there's not a lot of traffic on the road, so a bright orange Ford Transit van, there's not many of them. Watch for some more over as well. Other officers, including Dave McAllister and Adam Shipley, are also searching the area. I'm 100% sure that any orange transit van in the area is going to be the one we're looking for. It's hit the camera, coming back this way, just further down the road. That's one of the worst things I've ever had to record. I don't know if it'll stop. It's anybody's game. Let's see if we find out. Should be on it very shortly if it's coming back this way. Let's try and put a normal stopping on it first, mate. So I'm driving down the road and, lo and behold, vehicle coming towards me. Then all of a sudden, orange bonnet, bingo, there it is, passing me. It's passing me now, it's coming back towards you. Tango 38 directly behind this transit van now. Just for information, high performance, marked vehicle pursuit management trained. I'll, what I'm going to look at doing is putting a natural stopping on it when I've got another unit with me. Yeah. He's weaving around a bit in the road, I don't know what he's doing. His driving is a little bit questionable, and I'm thinking, now, is this because he's seen me in his mirror? I'm in a marked police vehicle. We stick out like sore thumbs. Let's see where he goes. It's the third, the third, eight, six, ten, down towards the nick. And then the first, the first, I'll try and put a stop in here. The vehicle is not stopping at the minute, stand by. Are we, are we game on here or? Are we actually going to stop and we're just taking our time? Vehicles into McDonald's. I'm pulling up to the side of him to try and block any escape routes. Come by. To stop him from trying to get in a, trying to get away. Amazingly, he doesn't try it. He's just he's just stopped. Why have you been stopped? Uh, great. Well, no, not exactly. You don't. No. Right. Okay. You just stole some petrol from. Um, Petrol station around the corner. Okay. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. incorrect. The petrol station where this has just happened is literally a mile from the police station. You're under arrest for theft, isn't it? Dave and Adam arrived to help search the van for further evidence. Ah, oh, it's on false plates. Was it on false plates? It can be on false plates, he's got no insurance. I'll bet. Because he's got no licence, no insurance. Um, so we'll take the vehicle for that. Uh, and I would wholly suspect that he matches the description of the offender on CCTV. So he's been arrested for the theft of that fuel at the minute. So the orange transit itself, on seeing it, it is it's a shed, for want of a better term. It is a shed. It's full of rubbish, but there isn't actually any fuel in there. Uh, these 
just a bit of like drug paraphernalia in the uh, in the cab of the vehicle, um, like a, a crack pipe in there as well. So clearly the occupants are drug users, uh, and looking at this, also involved in the production of it as well. Got your filters, tent frame for it. Uh, there's the grow tent and lights. Electrical cable and routing. Isn't it? Yeah. Got all your lamps and, and all sorts in there. All use production of uh, cannabis low level usually but looking at this it's, it's been a, a reasonable size grow at some point it's really not the brightest though is it to go steal fuel or then continue driving around the area so don't think Mensa are going to be calling him anytime yeah. soon are they? so yeah well yeah. the van is recovered and the man will be taken for questioning back at the police station the officers retrieve the CCTV footage of the theft. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I can just I can tell yeah. already. It's, um, wearing his heart when he's wearing his silly Bob the Builder hat, um, grey hoodie, gets two big diesel, um, like 25 litre uh, containers out, fills them up, the other two out. Um, puts his F back through a film when it's fills them up, puts them back in, drives off, about 100 litres of diesel gone, 125 quid's worth. That's, that's good enough, I think that is. That's good enough. Coming up. Just make, oh, there we go. A stolen quad bike fitted with a tracking device sparks a high-tech hunt. You'll know when you're getting close, because it's a really high-pitched noise. It's going to be one of these six garages, I reckon. Over 250 cars and motorbikes are stolen every day in the UK. The thefts often take place overnight, with vehicles parked up to be moved on in the day. That's a repeat observation for a quad bike that's just been stolen. Described as a red Honda, was left uh, running by staff, uh, someone's mixed it with keys. Traffic cop Matt Cooling is responding to a call from the east of the county. When we're searching for stolen vehicles, time's really of the essence. It is important that we get there quickly because every minute that passes, potentially that vehicle's travelled, you know, half a mile or a mile away if it's at speed. So it is important that we get there as quickly as we possibly can. There's some sort of quad been stolen from a school and uh, it's got a tracker on it, apparently. So this car's tracker equipped, so if we can get to the location, it should activate and give us a chance of finding it. It was last seen going over fields at the back of the school, so we'll head in that direction and see if we can get a sighting of it. To steal from a school is, um, you know, it's, it's pretty low, really. It just happened, so we stood a very, very good chance uh, of uh, locating the the stolen quad and potentially arresting, you know, an offender that's, um, you know, riding it. My understanding is it'll, it'll start beeping and giving us a directional arrow. Uh, and the stronger the beat, the closer you are to, to the tracker, basically. Keep driving around until, um, until you're on top of it. Comes like a game of cat and mouse, almost. Matt's colleague, Luke Christian, has also made it to the location and is searching for the stolen quad. I've also got the tracker on my car. There's any specific area or just at school, initially. There was no direction of travel being, but it's... Obviously, the whole area is black, surrounded by a large amount of farm. There's no sign of it near the school, so officers contact the tracker company to see if they can pin down its current location. The sergeant spoke with someone from tracker, and they've given a postcode for where it was last pinged, basically, which is at Sandy Acre. From where we were, it's about five mile away, so it's obviously travelled some distance. Just make... Oh, there we go. Okay, Tango 2-9. Nine. Yeah, track is just activated now. Um, as I'm parallel with Torbury Way, and it's about half signal strength. Have you turned down? It is getting stronger actually as I come down Norbury Way. Oh, I can't see any pass loop to walk from here, so I'll drive round to Barker Avenue. Uh, 
there's a little path of where I am now. I'm definitely going away from it, so it's definitely that way. At that moment, I'm thinking we're, you know, we're obviously really close now to located it, and obviously potentially we're going to we're, we're going to find the culprit as well. I'm getting a signal again. You'll know when you're getting close because it's a really high pitched noise, like you were getting before, and it gets really like. Beep, 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 beep. Mate, come to Hart Avenue. It's getting stronger. It's going to be there, isn't it? That's, you sound very, very close to me. It's going to be one of these six garages, I reckon, Luke, if you get here. Oh, I've got it. I've got it here, parked up. Um, do you want to... See if the school have got a spare key or something then for it. Oh, well, well happy with that. That's my first use of tracker as well since I've been an RPU, so winner. That's the top result, that, actually. It's really satisfying that, you know, within a very quick period, we've managed to locate the school's property. You know, that doesn't happen that often in reality. Sometimes it could be days or weeks, and in most cases, never. Mate, I thought it was in one of these garages, and then I just kept creeping forward, and then uh, I just saw it parked there in the corner. Nice. So I thought, oh, nice one. It's not been here long, has it? No. Yeah, I was going to say within an hour. Ultimately, you know, them paying for the tracker system has obviously paid off. Nice job. I'm going to have a look and see if there's any CCTV. The quad bike is recovered and will be taken back to the school. I'm, I'm, I'm proper chuffed with that result. Just shows perseverance. You know, again, pays off. Make use of the technology that we've got. There's absolutely no way we'd have found that without the tracker activation. You know, it's a move five mile. Then what? We've found it within what ten minutes. Cracking result, really, really, really good result. The theft from HGVs, the theft of motorbikes, theft of vehicles. It's frustrating when you see kids involved. They get suckered into it. They they they're vulnerable, basically. OCGs, organised crime groups, they, they target these lads purposefully, they get them to do their dirty work for them. And unfortunately, one thing always leads to the other. It's a step into the world of organised crime and it's very hard to break out of that once they're in it. My views on thieves and theft in general, I, I can't stand them. I have to pay for stuff. I go to work, I have to pay my way, they should as well. It's not a victimless crime and ultimately, we're all paying for it, for these people that are stealing it. In this episode, coming. Hands up. the man who hid in a pond has been summoned to court for failing to identify the driver of the car. But no action has been taken against him for the alleged lorry thefts. None of the other suspects who ran off have been tracked down. Smashed down a bollard. The man suspected to be the driver during the high-speed pursuit, which left a car on three wheels. What's your name, Chief? No no no. And the passenger on crutches, who was also arrested, have both been released under investigation. Idiot kids. Yeah? None of the other suspects were found. Box on, box on. The man who was chased following several catalytic converter thefts and swerved into a police car was not charged with any theft offences. He did, however, plead guilty to dangerous driving, criminal damage and driving with no licence or insurance. Sit tight and stay quiet. He was sent to prison for a year and banned from driving for three years and five months. I've been stopped. Uh, great. Oh, no, not chocolate. You don't. The van driver suspected of stealing petrol. You're under arrest for theft. Oh, right. Pleaded guilty to the theft and was sentenced to 44 weeks in prison. He was also banned from driving for 12 months for having no licence, no insurance and no MOT.